Hey, welcome to social studies. Social studies. So social studies. Yeah. Woo! In this lesson, we're going to be talking about our Caribbean culture and heritage. Stop for a minute and think about all the Jamaican people that you know. Now think, do they all look alike? Do they have the same skin color and hair texture? <laughs> no. Even though they're all Jamaicans, they have different physical features. This is because our ancestors came from different areas of the world. Now let's think again. Do you know Jamaica's motto? <laughs> That's right. It's out of many, one people. Mottos usually summarize what people in a group believe in. Can you guess what this motto means? You guessed it. This motto illustrates the mixture of people in Jamaica's population. Out of many means that we're descended from many different ethnic groups. But we've managed to create a culture that's uniquely Jamaican. And so, despite our different backgrounds, we share a common heritage and have emerged to form one people. But before we go any further, you need to know what an ethnic group is and what exactly we mean when we say the word culture. Culture is the way of life of a particular group of people and includes things like their language, dress, food, dance, music, religion, traditions, and festivals. Now, an ethnic group is one in which people belong to the same race and share a common culture. Over many centuries, different ethnic groups have come to live in the Caribbean, each bringing their own cultures. For example, the East Indians upon their arrival were a distinct ethnic group in the Caribbean. So too were the Africans, the Chinese, and the Europeans. In the Caribbean, peoples from the different ethnic groups interacted with each other and learned about each other's ways of life. This eventually caused a mix of many different cultures, which all come together to form our rich Caribbean culture. Now let's learn about the main ethnic groups which made Jamaica their home, why they came, what they did to survive, and what happened to them over the centuries. The first known inhabitants of Jamaica were the Tainos. The Tainos also occupied islands like Cuba and Haiti and were a part of a group of people called Amerindians who were originally thought to have come from Asia. The first ethnic group to arrive in the Caribbean region were the Amerindians who settled here over 35,000 years ago. Because they were the first people to live in the Caribbean, we refer to them as indigenous people. The Tainos were mostly farmers, fishermen, and hunters. They cultivated crops like cassava, squash, papaya, and many others. They were simple yet very skillful and peaceful people. The word Jamaica is believed to be of Taino origin as it was derived from their reference to the island as Jamaica, land of wood and water. Our coat of arms bears the images of two Tainos, as well as the symbol of the pineapple, a fruit that was a common part of the Taino diet. A few Taino words have even become a part of our English language. For example, iguana. Check out this table that will show you some of the words which we have adapted. Stay tuned for this video that will teach you more about the Tainos and their way of life. But don't get confused, in the video they refer to them as Arawaks. But don't worry, they're talking about the same group of people. The Arawak were the first people living in Jamaica. They were peaceful and loving people. They were short and sturdy with brown skin and straight black hair. The Arawak flattened their baby's forehead at birth as they believed that was attractive. 
the Arawak lived near the sea and were great fishermen. They used tools from stones and shells, and their utensils and pots were made from clay. The Arawak planted crops like maize, cassava, yams, and sweet potatoes. The Arawak also grew cotton from which they made hammocks and some of their clothes. The Arawak wore their hair in a bang at the front and wore very little clothing. On special occasion, the Arawak men painted their bodies in bright colors. The Arawak chief is called the Kashik. He wore feathers on his back and also paint on his body in bright colors. The house of the Arawak were made from wooded posts and palm leaves. The house had little furniture. The Arawak slept in a hammock. The chief house was the biggest. Jamaica's coat of arms has two Tainos, Arawaks, standing on each side of the shield. A female. Awesome. So next up are the Europeans. The origin of Europeans in the Caribbean began with the arrival of the Spanish when Christopher Columbus came to the region. Can you find Spain on this map? Columbus made four voyages to the Caribbean and he arrived in Jamaica on his second voyage in May 1494. Spain's interest in Jamaica was primarily influenced by the search for gold. But when they found no gold, not many Spaniards wanted to settle on the island. But the fertility of the land that made it good for food production and its strategic location eventually resulted in their settlement. The first the first Spanish town was set up in 1509 at Sevilla de la Nueva in St. Anne. Pause this video and take a look at this map showing the locations of various Spanish towns. Do you see any names that still exist today? The legacy of the Spaniards remains mainly in the names of several places and rivers in Jamaica. For example, Sabana de la Mar, now known as Savannah la Mar, means in English, the plain by the sea. While in Jamaica, the Spanish pursued several occupations. Among many things, they reared cattle, sold animal skins and fat to passing ships, and built ships from local lumber. The Spanish brought several plants to Jamaica like sugarcane, bananas and plantains. They also brought animals like horses, sheep, bulls, cows, rats and mice. They also introduced Christianity and the Roman Catholic religion to Jamaica. Within about 60 years of the arrival of the Spaniards, much of the Taino population had perished. The Spaniards made slaves of the Tainos, beating them and treating them very harshly. Some Tainos ran away, some fought back, some even killed themselves, while others died from European diseases like smallpox. In 1655, the British captured Jamaica from the Spanish. Soon after, migrants began to arrive from England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. When they arrived, the British settlers began to grow sugarcane and established large farms which became known as sugar estates. They soon realized that they needed many more workers to plant and reap the sugarcane and to manufacture the cane into sugar. Therefore, the British brought more African slaves to Jamaica. By the middle of the 18th century, Jamaica was producing more sugar than any other country in the world and was Britain's richest colony. The British ruled Jamaica from 1655 to 1962 when the island gained its independence. The British have left a very strong legacy in Jamaica, including the names of people and places, language, architecture and several customs and laws. Did you know that the contribution of the British is even evident in the food we eat today? They exported rum and molasses and traded them for things like flour, pork and saltfish. 
The British also introduced things like breadfruit, mangoes, black pepper, and coffee. These are still favorites today. Jamaicans love for food like porridge and pastries like tarts, Easter buns, jams, pies, and puddings are also a legacy of the Brits. The legacy of the British also remains in the names of several Jamaican places like Irish Town, originally the site of Irish settlers, and Papine, which is named after a village in Scotland. So back to the Africans. They had no desire to leave their countries, but Europeans thought that they would make good workers. And African labor was also cheaper. So Europeans forcefully shipped them to the West Indies to be sold to planters that forced them to work on plantations. The slaves who came to Jamaica were from the western part of Africa, mainly from the Igbo tribe of Nigeria and the Ashanti tribe of Ghana. Find Nigeria and Ghana on this map. African boys, girls, men and women were taken by force, put in chains and shipped across the Atlantic Ocean on a route which is known as the Middle Passage, a trade system that linked Europe, West Africa and the Caribbean. The triangular trade system worked like this. Iron and cotton were taken from Britain to West Africa and traded for slaves. Then, the slaves were transported from West Africa to the Caribbean. And finally, sugar, molasses and rum were taken from the Caribbean back to Britain. Because so many Africans were brought to the Caribbean, the majority of Caribbean countries' populations are of African descent. Jamaica's cultural heritage has therefore been heavily influenced by West African traditions. For example, our language, Jamaican Pato, is a mixture of English and African languages. Words like Aki, Obia, Anansi, Uno, Nyam, Jinal, Fuful, Dem, and many others are all of African origin. Other parts of Jamaican culture that have been influenced by Africans are our dance like the Dinky Mini and John Kunu, our music like Mento and our love for heavy drumming, and folklore like Obia, Dopies, Jamaican proverbs and Anansi stories. In Jamaica, after slavery ended in 1834, plantation owners still needed a labor force to help keep their estates in business. So, the government turned to the Indians and the Chinese to help solve their labor problem. Can you find India and China on this map? The Indians and Chinese came to Jamaica as indentured laborers. This means that they came to work on the sugar estates on a contract, but they weren't free and many were harshly treated. When the contract ended, they could either go home or accept a gift of land and money and remain in Jamaica. Many Chinese and Indians returned home, but many stayed in Jamaica. Indians who stayed became jewelers and shopkeepers, while Chinese who stayed set up small grocery shops and restaurants throughout the island. With the Indians came the introduction of yet another culture to the Caribbean. The Indians introduced their innovative methods of farming, including rice cultivation, as well as new plants and trees like jackfruit, tamarind, and coolie plum. Foods such as curry dishes and rice, which is a popular staple in the Jamaican diet, are of Indian origin. The influence of Indian belief systems and their distinctive music, dance and dress have also been incorporated into Jamaica's culture. Many characteristics of the Chinese have positively impacted Jamaican society, like their diligence and their emphasis on education and family. Chinese entrepreneurs have ventured into many fields and have also made a big contribution to the development of early Jamaican music, like reggae. Today, 
methods of Chinese cooking have been successfully incorporated into our Jamaican culture. These include stir-fried, deep-fried, and steamed foods, as well as the introduction of pak choy, Chinese cabbage, soy sauce, and sweet and sour sauce. The latest arrivals to the Caribbean were people from the Middle East. The Syrians and Lebanese came to Jamaica in the late 1890s. Though they make up a relatively small part of our population, they are still a prominent ethnic group in Jamaica. In settling on the island, the Lebanese were able to set up successful small business places, especially in downtown Kingston. They are also known for their success in tourism, horse racing, industry, and manufacturing. Today, not only are the Lebanese known for their success and expertise in business, but they have played a significant role in the commercial and industrial development of Jamaica. Even one of Jamaica's former prime ministers, the Honorable Edward Siaga, is a Lebanese descendant. Now you know a bit more about the different ethnic groups that have settled in the Caribbean. What are they again? The Tainos, Spanish, British, Africans, Chinese and Indians, and Lebanese. Each of these ethnic groups have brought their own unique cultures. That's why we say the Caribbean is culturally diverse. This cultural diversity gives the Caribbean its unique Caribbean identity. Our identity is the way we belong to our family, school, neighborhood, community, ethnic group, parish, nation, and the Caribbean region. The unique cultures brought by all these different ethnic groups have led to many differences between Caribbean nations. We have different languages, different religions, different ways of cooking, different types of music, folklore, festivals, and dancing. So let's take a look at some of the differences and similarities in the cultural heritage of Caribbean people. Wait, the cultural what? Cultural heritage. This is the culture that we inherit from one generation to another, passed on to us by our ancestors. In the Caribbean, the languages we speak are part of the legacy of the various civilizations from which our ancestors came. There are six official languages spoken in the Caribbean. English, Spanish, French, Dutch, Haitian, Creole, and Papiamento. Pause this video to see which countries have these as their official languages. As you can see, most of these official languages are European-based, but Caribbean people also speak various forms of Creole like Jamaican Patois, indigenous or Arawak languages like Garifuna spoken in St. Vincent, and even Hindi spoken by Indian descendants in Trinidad, Guyana, and Suriname. Our religions are also diverse. Christianity is widely practiced in the Caribbean, but Hinduism and Islam are popular in places like Guyana, Suriname, and Trinidad and Tobago. African religious traditions like Voodoo, Pocomania, and Orisha are also practiced, while Rastafarianism has spread throughout the region. The Caribbean is filled with different types of music. Calypso, which originated in Trinidad, and reggae, which originated in Jamaica, are the rhythms most identified with our region. But we also have indigenous musical forms like the punta from Belize, the zouk from Haiti, and chutney from Trinidad and Tobago. There are many dance forms in our region. For example, the dinky mini, jere, and tambu have an African influence, while European influences include the maypole and quadrille. We even have dances that mix Spanish, African, and Taino cultures, like the bomba from Puerto Rico. But even with all these differences, Caribbean people can be considered as one people with their own Caribbean identity. Although each Caribbean country is unique, we share common beliefs and customs and also common historical experiences. These common historical experiences include things like slavery, colonization, and a struggle for emancipation and independence. 
hopefully by now you realize that the Caribbean is a special place. Our Caribbean culture is important. It connects us with people from around the world, helps our economies to grow, and attracts tourists to our region. But how can we preserve and promote our Caribbean culture? Caribbean governments have greatly helped to promote our culture through various cultural programs, laws, institutions, and organizations. For example, organizations like the Caribbean Community or CARICOM help to preserve and promote our shared culture through regional cooperation and integration among its Caribbean members. Stretching from the Bahamas in the north to Suriname and Guyana in the south, CARICOM comprises of 15 member states that are considered developing countries and, except for Belize, Guyana and Suriname, all of its members are island states. The main objectives of CARICOM are to encourage trade or economic cooperation between member countries, to coordinate foreign policy among member countries and to foster cooperation in non-economic areas like health, education, sports and culture. Carifesta is a festival where countries showcase and celebrate Caribbean culture and heritage. Carifesta is therefore a good example of an event that helps to promote non-economic cooperation between Caribbean countries. So, the Caribbean has been shaped by waves of migration of different ethnic groups. Yet, even with all our differences, we can be considered as one people with our own Caribbean identity. Our culture is so unique and so important, and we must do our best to preserve and promote it.